Hey everybody, welcome to Pomeroy Art Academy Breakfast Club. And I'm going to uh, talk about how to draw simple shapes with shading. So let's get started. Now, if we have a, uh, a plane of some sort, like a tabletop, that serves as a base for a shape, and that could be something like a circle, a round. edge of my table there. And drawing circles, you know, you can draw all different sizes of circles, small ones, large ones, globe size ones. I give instructions to a lot of my students about drawing uh, basic shapes like the triangle, the square, and the circle and just drawing those and then getting involved with identifying you know the far side of these shapes if you have a um, you know like a notebook or a sketchbook you can just start practicing how to draw cubes for instance along with circles and pyramid triangle shapes at different angles. And remember, one of the things that's interesting on how to get depth is perspective. When you're thinking of an object that is floating in space or seated on a surface, you have to be aware that there is a horizon line and that there are vanishing points on either side of that object that give it its depth because if you simply draw a square with another side to it it gets very flat so perspective is what gives you your depth and the illusion that the object that you're drawing has a third dimension is 3d so just keep that in mind as you're drawing and sketching your basic shapes and going back to uh, the circle um, this tabletop has a vanishing point as well. And it goes off the side of the paper. But when you're shading an object, be aware of where the light source is coming. If the light source is three quarter in front, say there is a lamp right here, a standing lamp, where the light is pouring in this direction, three quarter top down. How is that going to affect this object? Uh, the light's going to stop right about here, about three quarter down the round side of this sphere, of that ball. And then what you're gonna get is a cast shadow. So we shade this in. And by the way, that area where the light meets the dark is called the core. And that's where the darkest part of your shadow on the object is gonna be, at the core. Gets a little lighter as it wraps around to the side. And then underneath is going to be the cast shadow. Now, depending on the way this light is being shown, the cast shadow would be about that big on this ball. And the edge of the shadow has the deepest darkness. And then it gets a little, a little lighter as it goes away from that edge, much like the core. And so this would be our cast shadow for that object. Also, there would be a cast shadow or there would be a shaded area along the edge of the, uh, of the tabletop that the ball is sitting on because that edge is away from the light. Uh, there's a little bit of light hitting it on the front end, so it would be darker here than it would be here. If you have a, uh, let's try another object. Let's try something else. Um, we do a cylinder. Almost like a can shape. It has a slight perspective also. You notice that the top part 
is a little more shallow than the bottom part because we're thinking in terms of perspective. And we're saying it's sitting on a table also that has perspective. Here's the edge of the table with the board that it's sitting on. Now, what if the light source on this cylinder is in the back three-quarter, shining down on it in this direction? Then you would get maximum light at the top where the light is hitting it, and then you would have a core right here along this edge where the light stops and shadow begins. And everything else would be in cast shadow here. And then from that point, right where the core hits the tabletop, you would start a shadow. Now, depending on the degree that the light beam is hitting, that, that shadow may extend all the way to the edge of this table, like so. And once again, the edge of the shadow being the darkest part. The edge of the table would be in shadow. So the shadow created by the cylinder as it drops off the edge here, it would disappear. And also there would be shadow to a, to a different degree on this side of the table or board. If the if the object were directly in front of the light source, let's do this with uh, a pyramid shape. There's our table. Here's our perspective. And say the light source is directly on the other side, shining directly at us, then you would get something like the entire object would be in cast shadow, reading as a silhouette against the light source, and then you'd have the shadow creeping towards us. Edge of the table. would also be in shadow, like so. Once again, the edge of the shadow would be the darkest part. There might be a slight difference between this shadow part and this one, this side that's facing more towards us. There's still dark silhouettes. The entire object is in darkness, but there might be a slight difference in tone. So there might be a slight differentiation between that shadow part and this shadow part. Let me show you another interesting thing too. Um, rim light. Um, this happens where there's a curvature to the object. Let's, let's say that we have the same combo. Light source is right there. We have um, a ball right here. It's on the tabletop, same as the uh, pyramid shape. The light is coming directly at us. But there, because the object is slightly curved, the line of the shadow may creep up a little short of the edge of the object. And all of this will be in shadow.
this whole area. It would get our core would be right there. And then there would be a cast shadow from the back towards us and the edge of the table. But right here, I'm going to lighten this a little bit with my eraser. Right there is the rim light. And that is that happens when you have any kind of a curved shape. And it's really nice for drama purposes. You know, imagine a character's face. Um, the character is looking at us in surprise and the light source is in back of them. So you have this terrific rim light that will give you some drama graphically. In your presentation, it's really a, you know, a nice little element to add into, you know, your uh, sketching. So uh, with a round object, there'll be rim light. With a flat object, you'll have a complete dark shadow. So that gives you some ideas about, you know, how to create shading on geometric objects and rounds. And I uh, hope that it's useful for you. We look forward to seeing you at the next uh, Pomeroy Art Academy Breakfast Club. Take care, bye-bye.